prologue. A voice from the past. I feel confused, amazed, awed, uncertain. A jumbled mess of emotions. As I sat cross-legged on a stoic sax covered bridge near Gettysburg, engaged in a most unbelievable conversation, a question on the tip of my tongue was simple, yet I couldn't quite bring myself to ask it. Sir, did you die at Gettysburg? The spirit bolt was emitting static almost continually was breaking through here and there, at first often garbled and difficult to understand, but coming more quickly and quite clearly as we went along. How many of you are with us? asked our investigative guide, investigative guide Destiny, Destiny, seven, eight, nine. What year is it? Unintelligible, unintelligible, three. Could this be, as I contemplated that the answer, I was speechless. The bloody battle of Gettysburg took place in July of 1863. Destin- Destiny continued the questioning. How old are you? When we received our immediate answer, I chimed in with, What unit are you in? 2020. Immediately I wished I waited a bit. This was in answer to Destiny's question about his age or mine regarding his unit. 20. And just a moment later, Captain... Our mind was spinning at this point. Here I was, someone who grew up not believing ghosts, a veteran journalist, used to questioning everything, apparently having conservation with a captain who fought at Gettysburg more than after 50 years ago. Was it really possible? Was there some gigantic, wildly incredulous, incredible hoax? Or was it this a conversation, someone somehow real? What was it that brought me? I once died in hard in a wall. Paranormal Delta to this haunted bridge in search of ghosts. Chapter 1 Grandma's Ghost Stories I used to be a close minded sceptic. This, there is no such thing as ghosts. A ghost. I believe people suffered from runaway imaginations at times, or there were natural explanations for strange happenings. If someone had just take the time to properly investigate, I was sure of that. I must admit, I did have just the tiniest, I mean it, tiniest, bit of doubt. When I was a child, my maternal grandmother, Molly Champion, told me about living in a haunted house, Louisiana. Grandma described the feeling someone sat on the edge of her bed when she, no one was there. She could feel the weight of an invisible person. She said she could see an invitation on the mattress. She also told me the unseen being would pull the uh, covers from her bed as she and Grandma slept. Once Grandma said she woke in the middle of the night to see a man standing at the end of the bed watching her and Grandma sleep. A man who had been visible in vanished in thin air. These stories were difficult for me to re- reconcile with my belief in ghosts. Grandma, you see, was not the sort of person who was going to share my false, any falsehoods with a straight face. She has a keen sense of humour and loved to joke with me, but for her, this was not a laughing matter. Grandma Champion, the rival and Henry Champion, was a Southern Baptist minister, and Grandma took her faith and role as a minister's wife very seriously. To this day, I simply cannot believe that Grandma was not telling me the truth, as she saw it regarding her ghostly experiences. I see no earthly reason why I should make them up. At the times, I simply went along with her ghost stories, nodding my head and pretending to believe. But all the while concluding she must have had an overactive imagination. I consider myself a very true person. I believe there is more to our existence than a temporary physical body but interaction with the dead? No way. Yet Grandma stories left the door open just a crack just a spark of curiosity to what exactly lies ahead of us beyond the earth's earthly plane. About a decade later in the mid-1970s experience gave me my Pause for thought. Doctors discovered a tumour in Grandma's abdomen. 
possibly cancerous, they believed, and she was undergoing surgery for its removal. While she was on the operating table, 800 miles away, I was in my bed at home, reading, and wondering how the surgery was going. While the procedure was very much on my mind, I looked at my watch to check the time. I was surprised to see my watch had stopped. This watch is relatively new, and was a wind-up variety. I checked to see that it was round. It was. I turned the stem to see that her hands would, would move. They did. But still, was still refused to keep time. You see, this watch was a gift from Grandma. I felt a chill and real fear for survival. I kept checking the watch, still and all, and after about ten minutes, it started up again. A Ghost at Gettysburg, A Journey's Journey into the Paranormal by Don Allison. My mind was spinning at this point, and here I was, someone who grew up believing in ghosts. A veteran awareness used to figure everything, apparently, having conversation with a captain who fought the Gettysburg more than 150 years ago. Was it really possible? Was this sunshine taking Riley ingenious? Incredible hawks was a conversation somehow real, and what brought me? And what is it that brought me? I once died in the Isle of Wall, pouring on my daughter to this paranormal bridge in search of ghosts. Don Anderson, after years of experiences that he could not rationally explain, experiences that when his people encounter and do, will do, shrug off to rationalize. Award winning newspaper editor, columnist Don Anderson decided to search for answers, parents, and Don, his grandson, of experience in Gettysburg in the spring of 2015. Finally convinced Don to present a serious look at the paranormal. This is that noted paranormal wizard's great uh, historian Mark Nesbitt, author of the Ghosts of Gettysburg series of books, has to say about me and I met the Ghosts of Gettysburg. A real, re- Great read, very entertaining. I think it created everything in explanation of the paranormal experience. Most people ignore or rationalize away paranormal events. Your book covers the many types of paranormal events. As paranormal events explains how you came reluctantly into some cases, it's those conclusions. <laughs>